Jackie, when we talk about farmers in Australia, they always talk about the term resilience. Now, do you think you have to be resilient to be a farmer? What does it take to live through these periods of dry times or drought? If you're living, if, if that's what you love doing, if, if that's your passion, breeding cattle and, and raising your kids out on the, on the place and that, um, I, th- you know, there's lots of tough times and lots of good times and I think I, th- I don't know whether they're resilient I, th- I'm, I hope that a lot look at the the more positives than the negatives you know because there's so many positives with it you know and we choose to live out there um, but it's not a not a resilience it's a I think you know the the potential of what you're doing and you know that if it's a bit tough at the moment it's fine we'll we'll get through it you know there's a I often tell the kids there's always a solution to every problem so, so farmers terms of trade have been declining you know for the last 50 60 70 years why do you stay in farming oh i suppose you know there's no we're not it's no good saying we're bred into it because we don't have to be there we can move on if we like and do other things and a lot do um i, I just think that you know um, you're probably uh, to stay there you know well you stay there by being successful I guess or hopefully successful um, it's it is a it's it's a pretty good life um, you know you you're your own boss all that time and it is a good life and and but that doesn't mean to say we do it for the lifestyle because it is a business so but it's a good lo- it's a good business to be in, I suppose you th- should say. Yeah, you've got three boys; they're all involved in the properties. They've all got their own businesses. We need to talk about succession planning. It's something you say that many families don't do living in the country. Tell us about your story and succession planning. Uh, yeah, well, with the three boys, um, we, you know, like when they're. When they're new, new, you wonder, you know, what they're what they're going to do. They might go off and do something else. But in my opinion, we were lucky. Ours wanted to come back on the land. Um, that just makes it harder to get more land for. Them. But um, they wanted to come back, and they were really. Um, they each had different tal- you know, one was mechanically minded. Um, Clint can run the place, and Bill can too. But and then Bill liked the helicopters, and and they've all sort of crossed over a little bit too. They like the other thing, but they've got their 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 sort of passions, and also, and it all all gels to to run the to yeah. run the. Business. So you've got Clint. You've Clint's running the managing. Clint, and Shelley, pro- yeah. Clint and Shelley are managing Herbert, Herbert vale. vale. Bill and Bill. his family. Uh, Running, yeah, they're at Malakoff, and Bill and Beck were at Herb at Vale with um, Clinton Shelley, and they used and Bill's to, a pilot. Yeah, he's a helicopter pilot and fixed wing, and so is Clint. And um, but then when we bought Malakoff, actually Dan went down there first because it had um, the machinery shed with the, the pit for the truck and all that, and we started getting into we've got our own four deck unit. Um, because he loves the machinery, so he did that, and then Bill and Beck were off running the least feedlot. So and so that they learned a lot about feedlotting, nutrition, um, data recording of cattle, and that. So they run all of that now from Malakoff, and now they're back managing Malakoff, and also Bill's a chief pilot, so he coordinates the pilots and that back at Herbert Vale. And then Dan's running the contracting side of the business with uh, from Camelwheel. With uh, we get grading it um, over on the mm. Barclay table, and we where he's doing a water project at the moment for Paraway at Rocklands. Um, they're doing a big water project, and yeah, they all have their own thing. And yes, it was good because they wanted to come they wanted to come back onto the places mm. so and it's just we've just been able to cater for every section in house sort of thing and you're doing the accounts i mean your your yeah. role is very significant yeah i do the accounts and the girls help um because i think 
if you, you know, when you're first married and you go onto a place, you've got to feel that you've got a job, you've, you're working, you've got a purpose, and that's always the, with the girls. And Shelley, Shelley did payroll for a lot of years, and Beck still does the contracting invoicing and stuff like that, and then I do all the other books. Um, and Shelley's tied up with her own little business now, so she's, I've taken the payroll back from her. Um, so everyone, but everyone feels like they're needed. Which do you is have good. family meetings? Do you, do you discuss yeah. it, what the planning for the whole year? What do you, do you do? You've got to do that. You've got to always communicate and everyone's got to be uh, able to, you know, sit down and say, well, I, I believe, you know, maybe we should look at this. And, and we do have good meetings. I mean, everyone has their input and everyone's allowed to input whatever they want and then we discuss it. And um, it's, I don't know, it just seems to go really well. But you've got to make the, like Charlie and I, you can't, you know, we, it was good we ended up coming down here. We, we made, made way for another young couple to go to Malakoff to our house and we came down here. Um, that enabled the boys and the girls, um, Shell and Beck, to, you know, they're, you know, some people in the bush some they're they're in their 50s and that and they haven't they're still not running the place mum and dad still are and mum and dad are about 80 and still holding the reins and you've got to hand over they've got to feel that they're doing that their family is doing something towards and even though we're all together they've still got their section they've still got their um niche that they're they're that's that's what they're putting it into. So, so yeah, it um, you've got to make them feel like, you know, you don't want them to get to... Charlie, was it hard to hand over the reins? Because I know you're still incredibly involved and you do your own consulting and you're involved in the feedlots. Yeah, no, it, it, it's not that hard to hand over when you know that you're handing over to capable men. Um, and women. And women, yeah, of course. Um but so it's not that hard I mean you still get asked a lot of questions and um and try to answer them and so it's it's it shouldn't be that hard it is hard quite obviously for some people but but and maybe everyone thinks I'm still the boss but I I'm, I'm nowhere near the boss that I used to be anyway so um yeah it's it's not hard I think just getting back to organising your family when you're young. We, we were pretty lucky in the sense that an old family lawyer who was one of the first lawyers in, in, in his that, that specialised in secession planning, a fellow called Bill Anderson, and uh, he took us there when the boys were really little and, 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 ne- and stayed involved the whole time right through and therefore because handing over is is great for the family but it can be very expensive very you can do some very wrong moves that cost you a lot of money mm. um you know in the price of cattle and, and and book values of cattle and and market values of cattle can cost you a fortune so you need very very good legal advice when you're doing it and and i guess the only thing that happens when things are going really good you don't have enough meetings you wait till something's troubling you before you have the meeting, and that's probably uh, the biggest problem with secession planning. When everything's going good, everyone's happy, so you, you leave it be. On. Yeah, you roll on, and and, and you wait. and then of course all of a sudden there's a problem, or one's little tiny problem may have grown a bit bigger, and so you, it's a problem you're trying to solve them. It's not na- it's not easy. It's not as easy, you know. So, but you've got to work on it, and you're working on it the whole time. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and you've got to try and be equal all the way through it all, and and uh, you know, you, yeah. So, it, it, oh, you work on it. Don't don't worry. You've got to work on it, you know. And that's why I guess if you work on it all the time, it might be a bit easier to hand over in the end. Your plans for the future, Charlie. Oh, I, I, I hope people don't think I'm retired because I'm not, no, and I don't want to be retired. You're as busy and active as ever. <laughs> I don't want to be retired. I just want to be. Uh, I want people, the boys, to be able to come to me if they think they got a problem. I, you know, the last three or four years have been a bit tough for us. I, I mean, um, I suppose it, it was markets more than drought because because the the 
the live export was probably the start of it all when they with the ban on the live export and millions hundreds of thousands of cattle flowed into Queensland and tightened the market up and it got dry at the same time so the processors had a picnic with us and um, and they've had a fair bit in their favor for the last 10 years and so um, and, and and I guess that it's catching 10 years of that and, and it's been good too don't worry then it's not the processors had their they have their tough times, but their times seem to be a bit shorter than ours. But the Eastern Young Cattle Indicator, I mean, a couple of years ago was you know well over six fifty. I mean, it, or what got to six fifty? I mean, cattle prices are probably as good as they've been for decades, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they they fluctuate quicker than they used to. Uh, they fluctuate because because purely on on seasons, you know, and um, so I guess that. That's been a bit of a problem this year. We've we've seen a real low this year in probably around about May in the store market, and um, and so the store market and the fat market haven't been travelling together as much as they have done in previous years, and that's because of lack of rain in it in certain areas and and plenty of uh, cattle coming onto the market. So, and I don't know I. Our cattle numbers in Australia are very low, and and because we can keep continue to kill cows or females, and um, you know I, I just sort of think that um, we need to keep an eye on that, and 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 hopefully the seasons will turn where we can get things back, uh, and and be able to spread our um, spread our losses. Over the over the next ten years, rather. Than okay, over the next ten years, to, heading towards your fiftieth anniversary, what would your plan be for the next ten years for you and Jackie? Oh, we will probably hopefully um, keep doing what we're doing. Um, what about that feedlot and consulting in Sydney? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to, you know, just I. I don't, I don't really want things to change the way they are. Have been yeah. very good, um, and and watching, you know, I guess in the next ten years there'll be bought grandchildren that will be sort of trying to either fit into our organisation or they will have gone somewhere else, and uh, so that'll be new. Uh, and so we need to grow. We certainly need to grow. But uh, Jack and I just need to watch what's going on and, and probably oversee the big picture. What about these five little grandkids you've got? Yes. Two of them are at boarding school in, yes. in Toowoomba yes. and three others. Yeah, three Tell others. Tell us about the grandkids and what, you're, what you'd say to them about a life on the land. Oh, well, the two boys, they're the first two down for school and it's, it is really good. I, and, and I, you know, you can even tell when they're here. I mean, we're so much more carefree with them, you know, we're... Um, Chapman really enjoys having the boys down, and um, it's they're, and they're really bush kids. They're real bush kids. Um, the whole five of them. Uh, so, but it it I don't know. You just it, it it's just being a grandparent. You know, they're just so. Do you much enjoy fun. that being a grandparent? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm probably I'm still actually with uh, young Locke likes to come out into the shed and he wants to build something every weekend he's here so and Ben's a really actually Ben reminds me so much of his dad Clint the way he was and then um, and and Locke's a little bit different Um, he's more hands-on I suppose Um, but yeah it's really good and we've had the girls here the last week and um, that's going to be a different thing because we know nothing about girls I had with the three boys that have a thing do they like working no, um, one of them, that, yeah, they do like coming out and m- creating things, which is good. So I'm hoping one of them will be, you know, in that way. Um, but the other, the, the whole three of them, yeah, they love being outside. They love their horses too. They love their horses and then they work hard. They, the whole five of them, like on the holidays, they, I think they'll come back to school and have a break. The two boys, they'll. <laughs> but no, it's great. That's terrific. So over the last 40, 40, so over the last forty years, you've been, you've created properties, you've done up properties, you've moved on, you've had three kids. It's been pretty good, isn't it? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, it's been really good. I wouldn't want it any other way. And I don't know. I think it's as you get older now. I just wish for. I'm probably a more whatever person, and I just hope as long as everyone's healthy and happy, 
Mm. Why do you call him Chappie? Which happened in? He didn't want to be called Grandpa or Pa. He said they can call me Charlie. I said no, they can't. I said, oh, no, I thought of, I thought well, Chappie and Pa, and so I got Chappie. And then Clint used to call my mum Ninny because he couldn't say Nana. Mm-hmm. So we were just chapping in. So, that's so names. thanks very much, <laughs> chapping in. Chapping in, yeah. Thank you very much, Rob.